Bismillah. As we continue with the story of the boy and the king, in the last episode, we learned about these characters. We learned about the system that was around them, a system of repression and oppression, and a system where anyone that stood up to them was immediately threatened. And in fact, we learned that the king took the monk and threatened him. If he does not renounce his religion and worship the king alone, that he will be killed. And in fact, he killed him with a saw in the most gruesome way in front of a limited court. And then the same thing happened with the man that used to sit in the king's court themselves. And also when he refused and was steadfast, he was murdered in front of these people. But the king, he could not murder the boy because these two were not known to the people, but the boy was known to the people by their service. He did not want to create a martyr out of him. He wanted to squash this out and use his machine and his apparatus. And this is a really heavy part of the story because in fact, something that was even more powerful than the magician, than the king, and the court was the silence that propped them all up. What the king wanted to do was to eliminate this in a way that would keep the people silent, repressed, and without a choice. And people would just look on as oppression continued. So he did something different with the boy. He instructed a group from among his plainclothes officers, his, his court, to take him on top of a large mountain and threaten him with the same thing, but away from the eyes of the people. And if he does not renounce his faith, that he would be thrown off the mountain and killed. But when they got to the mountain, the boy made a sincere supplication to Allah. And as you hear this story, I wish for you to not only distance yourself from the abilities, from the miracles, from the gifts of the boy, because the boy is not a prophet. He's supported at the level of a righteous servant. So bring yourself close to the heart, to the investment, to the service, to the work of the boy. Because in that sincere moment of supplication, this boy who was not a prophet, he said, Allahumma kfinihim bimashiyat. Oh Allah, save me from these wrongdoers however you will. And in that moment, their plan was foiled. The earth shook and these people were taken away from the boy. And the boy walked back on the strength of his own two feet to the king. Now the king was shocked when he saw this, his plan had been foiled and he tried again, brought another group of plainclothes officers, another element from his court, took, told him, take him into the middle of the sea, far from the eyes of people and give him that ultimatum. If he does not renounce his faith, then throw him into the bottom of the ocean. And the affairs repeated. As the time passed, they went out to the water, into the boat, out into the middle of the sea, far from any eye of any person and gave him that threat and ultimatum. And the boy said, Allahumma kfinihim bimashit. Oh Allah, save me from them and protect me from them however you will. And he was protected from them. And he came back to the shore and back on the strength of his own two feet to the court of the king. The king could not believe his eyes. And the boy, he made a decision that is most unusual and that is rather heavy on the heart. It would seem that the boy recognized that what this society refused to learn from his life, they would need to learn from his death. It would seem that the boy was so firm, so resolute, so strong in his will to see this system interrupted, to see oppression come to an end, to see people enjoy freedom and dignity and faith, that he was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice if that was the only way that people would pay attention. So the boy, he told the king something. He told him, you will never be able to kill me unless you do as I say. He instructed the king to hang him from a tree and to take an arrow from the quiver, but to say some words, to say, Bismillah, Rabbil Ghulam. In the name of Allah, God Almighty, the Lord of the boy. In this, the boy asserted that he would be able to kill him and the boy knew that he would die, but he hoped that through this ultimate sacrifice after a young but fruitful life full of investment and sacrifice that the people would learn through his death what they had refused to learn in his life. The king did this and took the arrow and said these words and struck the boy with the arrow in his temple. And so the boy, he took his hands to the place of the wound and then he passed away. At this juncture, something happened that the king never imagined. It took enormous sacrifice and much hardship, but the people, something awakened within them. Their faith, their dignity, their sense and commitment to freedom, 
their sense of principle, it awakened as they all declared with one voice, Amanna bi Rabbil Ghulam. We believe in the Lord of the boy. As they believed in Allah and rejected not only the lordship of the king, but indeed everything that came alongside his false lordship. The system, the oppression, the repression, the idea that built on a mountain of lies that only a couple people could get ahead while others were held behind. This voice of courage moved the king to do something unthinkable. You see the people of the court, they said, exactly what you tried to avoid, that is what has happened now. What he tried to erase, he brought to life in all of the society. He had changed the society. And rather than surrendering to this change, rather than seeing the signs of Allah all around them, rather than taking this moment to repentance, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from unrepentant obstinance. The king did something unspeakable. He ordered his machine and apparatus, some of whom were still willing to do his bidding, to dig ditches, trenches, by the key places in the roads of the people and to light enormous fires within them. He sought still to hold on to his grip of power, of oppression, of repression. He sought to seat the fear that had been unseated in the hearts of people. And at this juncture, he started doing with many people, some scholars say some 20,000 people historically, threatening them with an ultimatum. And if they refused, casting them or throwing them or telling them to jump into the fire. As you can imagine, and we'll learn about the people that were now watching physical torture, watching the burning of people alive, all to prop up the power and opportunity of a person. We'll learn about that in a coming episode. But today, we center upon the tragedy that the boy recognized that this silence had to be interrupted, even if it meant that they would learn through his death what they would not learn in his life. And how strong is this lesson of the Qur'an for the affairs that we see all around us today, where the most clear of oppression and wrongdoing, where the butchering and genocide of a people in Gaza and the constant repression of people in lands east and west that are suffering from generational wars, from open air imprisonment, from not being able to see a world around them where they're stripped of freedoms and dignity and the opportunities that every human being could have. But sadly, there is an agent stronger than many heads of state and many generals of army. It is the silence and complacency of the masses. And so that Quranic warning that the silence of people can be more powerful than any agent is a warning that is most apt in our times where we are looking for dignified leadership, for courageous voices, and indeed for hearts that are aware. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam says, whomever amongst you sees something evil, let him change it with their hand, meaning through action if they are able to. And if they are not able to, then through their tongue, meaning through speech. And if they are not able to, then at least to detest wrongdoing in their heart, and that is the least of faith. May Allah awaken this reality and this recognition in our hearts and allow us to follow the courageous lessons learned from the life and the sacrifice of the boy. Allahumma ameen wa salamu alaykum.